Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am aware that it is very dark right now in the video, so I'm going to speed this up and time lapse the beginning until the sun comes up shortly and we can see what's going on. Then I'll just slow it down and play in real time. So today I'm at the wood yard and I'm picking out a new load of wood to haul home and I find some amazing goodies. So check it out and enjoy the show. Have a nice day. So two things happened, a couple things, because it was dark at the beginning of this video. I accidentally grabbed a piece of pine, a big old chunk of it. Uh, it was just mixed in with a big pile of new stuff. There was a bunch of new stuff that has been dumped in the wood yard dump. And uh, I grabbed a big piece of wood and it ended up being pine. So I have a little chunk of pine. Oh joy, not a big deal. I'm actually kind of happy about it. It's something a little different. Now I will take that pine and group it with my cedar and keep the softwoods together and just have like cedar and pine and uh, I'll just keep those in one little group so when I need that or want that or when I come upon that I'll know it's all in one area and I can draw from it and kind of mix it in. Unless somebody happens to want softwoods or just love cedar because it's pink in the middle and everything or whatever. Uh, and I sell it to them, I'll just mix it in with my hardwoods. It's great for keeping fires going. If you have a larger chunk, you can put a little cedar around it or get a fire started again or something. The other thing that happened is I grabbed a big old chunk of hardwood. I'm not real sure what kind of wood. And I should have known that, I mean, it, it felt a little light for the size that it was. It was a big old piece. And when I got it home and split it, it's pretty, I guess you would say, punky. Um, it's not really punky like you would think, like rotten, falling apart, but it's just that kind of wood that is like, has been sitting a long time and is, is like, when you hit it with a, with you, when you hit it with a wood mall or an axe, it, like, if, you, if you hit a corner, it just kind of shards off and do a bunch of little flaky chips and stuff. So, I mean, I guess punky would be the word. But it's not, it doesn't look like completely rotten, it's just, it doesn't have any mass to it. It's just real light and airy and it's like popcorn wood. So I got one of those, um, but I already split that in a future video that I'll air some other time. And um, I just threw that in my wood pile. I can probably burn that this year. There's no telling how long that has been in the wood yard. It's, it's clearly been seasoning or aging. Oh, my axe just threw some sparks off of it right there. If you were watching that, it slipped off that log and hit the ground and sparked. So I'm going to sharpen this axe. I'll probably do a video on sharpening my axe and the, and the other wood maul um, because I mean, I mentioned in my wood maul video that it still works to split wood with a dull wood maul. I mean, it, it, it's, it works, but I kind of like having a sharp edge on it because if you have any twigs or anything you need to sh uh, shave off, uh, having a sharp wood maul really helps. I mean, you can hit them with, with that and just shave them off and could do a little chopping kind of action. And it also is cool just to be able to stick your wood maul into the chopping block and uh, and have it stick there so you can grab it easier and stuff like that. So I think I am going to go ahead and sharpen my stuff. I do like it sharp. Now that I put my foot in my mouth and said that you can't really do anything with a dull maul that the sharp maul. I mean, as far as splitting, that's true. A dull maul still splits totally fine. But you can do a little bit of uh, more intense cutting with a sharp edge. So I like that. I'm going to sharpen them. And like I was saying before, 
I put that uh, punky kind of wood in my personal wood pile, and I think it will be dried out by this year. I'll just burn it, even if I throw it in the fire pit again. Uh, it's sitting facing up right in direct sunlight, and it's already been seasoning in the wood yard for God only knows how long. So now that it's split and it's wide open and it's so light and airy, when the sun hits that, it'll dry out in a few weeks probably. Um, but I'll burn that myself, no problem. It's just it's kind of a shame it took up a little bit of room in my truck because I'm not going to get a lot of BTUs out of that. But it is wood nonetheless, and it will burn. So as I mentioned, I grabbed that piece of pine out of this pile right here behind my truck, and it's kind of mixed in with a bunch of other stuff. But behind that pile is two other piles of some really beautiful maple that just got dumped. And it's just some really nice firewood. Um, so I started grabbing that and pulling from that pile, and you'll see what it looks like here at the end of this video. It's just really pretty kind of aqua colored wood, uh, the bark is anyways. And I think it is soft maple, though. I wish it was hard maple. I will double check that. Um, if I get back out there again and I can find the leaves on that, there was, a, there was just a few leaves sticking up, but they were already brown and shriveling up and drying up. So I glanced at them enough to, to know that it was maple, but I didn't really uh, fan them out and study them and see if it was a sugar maple or a red maple leaf. I think it looked more like along the lines of a red maple family. Um, but if it's sugar maple, I, I would be really happy if it's a hard maple. Um, I'll just have to go back and look. I mean, a sugar maple leaf is like the Canadian flag and the, the voids in between the tips down and the, and the dips of in between is rounded. And a red maple would be real pointy in the dips. So. Uh, you kind of have to unfold the leaves and lay them flat to get a look at them. And I didn't do that. I was in a hurry and I just kind of just kind of glanced at them and they were all shriveling up and everything. So I didn't unfurl, unfurl them all and, and look real close. I should have. But I think this is soft maple.
And another note, guys, about this video. Uh, if you notice the first 10 minutes or so after the sun came up, there kept being like this blurry dust moving around the camera. I think that was bugs because I had turned on the flash on my camera when it was dark to try to get a little bit more light and I think it was attracting bugs like gnats and stuff so I think that's what was swarming around <laughs> my camera um, it kinda looked like dust but um, just a second ago I know you can't really tell but I, I ended that previous clip and turned the flash off on my camera and started it again and that has gone away now so I'm pretty sure that was uh, small bugs flying around the camera It almost happened again. In my last video with the wood yard, I was throwing wood at my truck and one of them rolled into my camera tripod and that wood is so heavy, it just rolled right over a tripod leg. So my tripod now has two broken legs on it and I had to go home that day and, and duct tape it and I tried to use like super glue with paper towels to build up in the middle and like dab super glue on them and try to get them to harden up and have like some type of substance in the hollow middle. Uh, if you ever watch uh, Instagram and stuff they use ramen noodles to fix things and like you pound it into a powder and then you can sand it and everything. I thought about using ramen noodles in my tripod but I just didn't. I, I grabbed some paper towels and stuffed in there and I thought maybe if I stuffed it full of paper towels and then kept dropping drops of super glue on the paper towels that it would like harden into like a, a hard plug inside of the leg. And it didn't really work that great, I gotta be honest. Uh, it still has a lot of play in it. But I just, I did that and used super glue and then I wrapped it in duct tape and it almost happened again right there. I mean, I have it all set up. You can see in the wood, there's the truck and then my camera and the wood behind me. And so if you start throwing wood at your truck, you're either gonna hit your truck or your camera or something at some point, because wood does not roll straight. It has knots in it and it's not even, so it just rolls wherever it wants. It rolls like a football with bounce, so to speak. And uh, yeah, it just happened again. I am taking the time to split some of these rounds real quick because I have discovered that you can fit a substantially larger amount of wood in the truck if you, I mean, break them down as much as possible, but even if you just split them in half, you can fit five or ten more rounds on top of the pile um, because that lid, if you put a full-size round sticking up, on top of all that wood, the lid doesn't close at all. I mean, it, it moves down just a few inches and, and doesn't close at all. But if you cut them in half, split them in half like I just did, they barely take up any space at all. So you can split five or 10 rounds in half and just set them on top of the pile and you only gain, you, you know, what, three or four inches of space. Uh, so you can, still close that lid down quite a bit more 
And uh, as I mentioned in that first video I made of uh, how much wood can you fit in a truckload in a standard pickup truck, um, I'm not really mounting it up real high, but I don't really know that I would want to go much higher than I'm going uh, with with wood rounds like I'm stacking here that are in the you know 8 to 15 18 inch size range I wouldn't want to go much higher than that than the top of the bed rails and then drive on the interstate and everything else I mean I have a it's I think it's 18 miles to get to the wood yard uh, back and forth to my house so that's pretty dangerous I mean if you started trying to stack up rounds up in a big pyramid shape up over the top of your truck bed I don't feel like that would be very safe at all I mean if it was big huge chunky wood and it was sticking up high that's different I guess you know like really large rounds or just massive chunks of wood that are sticking up out of the top I mean that's not dangerous but the rounds you know uh, a 15 or a 12 inch round that's just all stacked up those will just shift and roll all over the place and roll so um, I don't think I would even really even without the lid like I mentioned before I don't think I would want to go much higher than the top of the bed if you feel differently about that I would love to know in a positive way in the comments about how you think I could fit more wood in my truck because uh, I would I'm always down for more wood um, I mean, I've thought about, I mean, if I could put ratchet straps on it or something and strap it down and stack it up more, but I mean, you can see what my truck looks like in a standard truck. I don't, I mean, it's not a flatbed truck or any type of, you know, work truck that would have places to put tie downs on it. Um, I mean, there's just nowhere to really put them. I, I mean, inside the bed, there's not even really anywhere. There's... I think there's one little metal loop inside that F-150 and it's up right behind the back of the cab and there might be another one in the other corner. But I would need them strap, I would need to stack the wood in rows and have like a uh, tie down on every stack. I think that would be the only way I could do it, um, to have ratchet straps. And I'd need a ratchet strap on every row of wood and I just don't think that there is a ratchet strap tied down inside that bed that could hold that much pressure. I mean, I can look, I can look and double check along the bed rail that there isn't something where I could put it. But off the top of my head, there's only there's only maybe a tie down place in the four corners, each four corner. So I'm not real sure how I could secure much more sticking way up out of the top of that. Let me know if you have any ideas. Something else I like about this beautiful maple wood is it just splits really nice. Uh, it's not, it splits easily and uh, unlike some of the other stuff I've gotten into out here, uh, if you looked at the beginning of this video you may have noticed that I, I threw a couple pieces back into the pile and I think that was that uh, banana stuff that you saw me trying to split in the previous videos if you've been watching. And I, I get this stuff home and start trying to split it sometimes. And it is stringy, dry, just stuck together, hard, twisted, bent grain stuff. I mean, nasty. And I mean, I can't run an ax through it hardly for the life of me. So this, this maple just splits so easy. And... Um, Hopefully it burns really well too. Hopefully when it dries out I get some good BTUs and some decent burn time out of it. But it's just so pretty and it splits so nice. Uh, I think it'll be a pretty decent firewood.
So that's it guys. Look at all of this maple. Uh, the wood yard is completely packed right now. It has been dumped on. I don't know what's going to happen at this point. There's no more room. Things just got crazy. I don't know what happened last week, but uh, the tree service just came and dumped all the way up to the gate so it is completely full they don't even have room to get another truck in and dump more wood uh, i don't know what's going to happen but you can see how pretty that maple is contrasted to the brown of all the other woods it's just awesome firewood and where all of this is stacked is supposed to be a road where you have entrance to drive in here and dump wood and stuff and it's you can see where the gate is it's completely full but here I am at home, and this is what the load looks like uh, that I collected today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, keep watching. I'm going to keep making wood and try to mix it up with some other stuff like I talked about. Have a great day, guys. See you later.